program contains subject matter and language that may not be suitable for younger viewers. Discretion advised. Comedy Now, starring Darren Jones. Please welcome Darren Jones. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Yeah. You guys all right? You feeling good? Yeah, what's up? Damn, girl, what's up, girl? Shit, look at you, girl. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, hang on with the special. Hang on, girl. What's up, shit, goddamn girl? Mm. I tell you what, girl, you ghetto fabulous, girl. Mm. I was watching BET today. I don't know what the fuck I just said. I'm sorry. I don't know. They just make shit up on BET, don't they? I would love to be a rapper. Just make, what's up, girl, goddamn? Mm. Yeah, girl, that's right, girl. You food stamp-tastic, girl. That's right. I'm going to trade you for some government cheese, B-I-I-I-H. Yeah. Nice to be here. Nice to be doing a special in Toronto. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Because Toronto, Toronto's had a tough year, hasn't it? Toronto's really been hoofed in the nuts a few times, wouldn't you say? Really been fucked in the ass, wouldn't you say? Toronto's gone through one long, unlubricated ass fuck, wouldn't you? Is that a fair assessment? I would say it's pretty fair. We've been torn, that's what I'm saying. We have. We have. The first thing was SARS. SARS was a big deal. I was in New York working uh, when the SARS thing broke. So I got the American perspective on the whole deal. And it's amazing what the Americans are afraid of and what they're not afraid of. Because I'm watching CNN, and they have no problem sending their sons and daughters overseas to Iraq to bomb and to be bombed and to blow shit up and to maybe die and that's okay. And then the next story, they're petrified Toronto's gonna sneeze on them. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. To the Americans, a weapon of mass destruction is a Canadian with a head cold. <laughs> that's what the Iraqis should have done. They should have grabbed Canadians with the sniffles and hurled them towards Buffalo and freaked like, I'd shoot, like, oh, I'm hit, I'm hit. I don't know why I grabbed my leg. Every war movie, they all never get shot in the face or the chest, it's always the leg. Oh, I'll never play tennis. But yeah, man, so I'm in New York, I'm stranded there, wondering what's going on with the city, looking for a beacon of light to come through the TV and tell me it's okay. Who shows up? Toronto Mayor Mel Lastman. Here's the thing I realized about Lastman. When you watch him on Canadian Toronto local television and he says something stupid, it's okay, it's not a big deal, we can deal with that. You know, it's like when your little brother poops himself at a wedding. But when you see him on international CNN talking, opening his pie hole, how to put it delicately, he's a fucking disgrace and he's got to go. This guy, what was he doing? Did you see him? He's on CNN pulling rank over the World Health Organization. He's on the like, oh, the WHO, what's, what's that upstart about? Oh, the World, oh, the World Health Organization. Ooh, what do they do? Deal with the health of the world? I got a piazza named after me in North York, bitch. Like, unbelievable, right? I had an American friend call me up and after he saw that, he's like, is, is that, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, is that your mayor on TV? I'm like, yeah. He goes, is, is he retarded? I go, we're not sure. We don't know. He goes, I feel so much better about our president. Sad, man. Sad state of affairs, boy. But then I came back to the city and SARS turns out wasn't that big a deal. I mean, if you died from it, it must have been awful. But for the rest of us, you know, what's the difference, right? Coffee? Yeah, that's right. So I came back to the city, I wanted to support the city, get right back into things. So uh, I went to that $1 Jays game, the SARS relief game. That was a dollar. I'm like, this splitting headache and dry cough are not keeping me away, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Blue Jays. <laughs> Tell me if you think this is weird. They kept the dome closed. 
It's infectious virus day. You got 50,000 people showing up. How about a breeze? Just, I'm not a doctor. How about a breeze? Want to see me uh, make a continuity girl have a shit in her pants? Ready? Watch this. Okay, so, um... Okay, I did it. Did you hear it? You, you heard it. It dropped. The hammer dropped back there. It's not nice up here anymore. Wow. Wow. I'll be the first guy to have a four-minute special. Perfect. 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 I got a good gay story. Uh, involves me. Um, no, it's, uh, it just walks into the realm of homo. It's not that gay. Okay, me and my roommate are walking down Young Street, and uh, this drug dealer approaches us. And he wants to sell his drugs. And his pitch is weird. He looks at us and he goes, you faggots want some weed? <laughs> and we're not gay and that's really offensive. So my roommate's like, what did you say? The guy looks at us, he goes, you faggots want some weed. <laughs> so two weird things are happening here. Number one, this drug dealer, for some reason, is trying to corner the homosexual weed using population, <laughs> which I'm sure must be niche at best. You know, they got to have a guy. And number two... My roommate is essentially saying, while well, we are gay, we get our weed elsewhere. Thank you. Okay. You guys can handle it. All right, all right. I like you guys. It's going to be election in Canada. Here's the problem. Paul Martin is a very, very, very rich man, but he acts like he's not. He acts like he's one of us. Example, I was on his website, and he's got a weblog, like a diary kind of thing. And he's talking about the time he purchased CSL, Canadian Steam Lines, huge company, does a lot of shipping all around the globe. And the way he writes about it, he's like, yeah, when we made the purchase, my wife and I had to borrow a lot of money and put everything we had into it, and we really had to scrimp and save to make the deal work. <laughs> Do you know how much the deal was worth? $180 million. <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to scrimp together $180 million? Really? I mean, what does he expect us to believe was going on in his house? Like, oh, honey, this is name brand peanut butter. You know we're trying to save $180 million. Now go take a bath in money and think about what you've done. Scary, man. George W., Emperor George, that's another scary rich white guy. He, uh, he is. He could kill us all. He wouldn't even know. He'd just sit on the button named at Canada in the Oval Office, like over coffee with Dick, and we'd be fucked. That's <laughs> as easy as that. He was in Africa, and that was fun watching him go around Africa. He was looking for oil. You know he was. The man, you know he was. The man loves his oil. He's a fan of oil. He loves some oil, doesn't he? He's got a rack on lockdown, so now he's looking for other places to bomb and drill. He just loves... Uh, give him credit. You know, you need a hobby. And the man has got something. He, lo I, he's, he can sniff it out. He's like a bloodhound, isn't he? Except instead of blood, it's oil. I'm sorry, that's blood for oil. I get that confused. All that I, get his, I get his policies mixed up. It's so hard to keep track of it. The best was watching him uh, on CNN uh, during the press conferences uh, at every stop in Africa because he'd have the African president beside him. Watching him try to pronounce that guy's name was awesome because he'd be like, I had a great chat with President Mumbatu, Mumbat, President Ugabugu. I had a great chat with this year, black fella. And, uh, we agreed, uh, he's going to give me his oil, and I traded him to the Knicks. <laughs> the president of Liberia did not step down. He wanted to play power forward in the NBA. Oh, and by the way, George, so glad, uh, if you're watching, so glad you uh, have time now to take on gay marriage, to ban gay marriage. It's so nice that he's got all the important issues like the economy sorted out. I mean, he must have that done now, which is good. Political, too far, all right. What's up, balcony people, you all right? You holding it down? I don't know what that means. All right, cool. All right. You guys, you look like them. All right, thanks for coming early, by the way. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, taking the effort to get here on time. Thank you.